do a little more reading, <clears throat> even if it's just a couple minutes. The guilt cycle, or the police officer in your head. Each religion has certain things that are forbidden or sinful. Children are taught with many examples, stories, and subtle signals as they grow up. In the area of sex, the secretiveness, subtle language, and behavior of adults, and occasional public examples all work to infect the child with fear of transgressing. Also, punishments, ostracism, and humiliation often occur when sexual behavior is discovered or suspected, ensuring that these lessons are internalized. If a person violates the code, there is no way to hide, the God knows you did it, even if your parents do not, and the God will punish you unless you confess. Those are powerful ideas for a child. Children are very susceptible to magical thinking at three to seven years of age when they're being taught magical ideas about God's watching or punishing them. It is a pattern of thinking that is embedded in the child's mind and often it continues until adulthood. You know, it is true because it probably still affects you and me too. Fast forward to today. A child learns that you must pray for forgiveness when you do something bad. If you do not pray or do not confess, God will punish you. This scenario sets up the guilt cycle. When you transgress or sin, you must return to your personal religion for forgiveness. Catholics do not confess their sins to Baptist ministers. Baptists do not ask for forgiveness from Muslim clerics. You must seek for forgiveness in the place where you learned about sin. It is as if the religion infects you with the disease and then gives you a fake cure. The former Muslim, now atheist, Ayan Hirshi Ali, gives a perfect example of the guilt cycle in her book, Infidel, 2007. A popular local imam, Abshir, began spending time with her. In his sermons, he preached strongly against intimacy before marriage and sinful thoughts, but his behavior was somewhat different. Ali says, I was having more and more sinful thoughts. When we were alone, Abshir would kiss me, and he could really kiss. It was long and gentle and thrilling, and therefore sinful. Afterward, I would tell him how bad I felt in the eyes of Allah and how much that bothered me. And Abshir would say, if we were married, then it wouldn't be sinful. So we must exercise willpower and not do it anymore. For a day or so, we would steal ourselves and refrain. Then the next day, we would look at each other and just kiss again. He would say, I'm too weak. I think of you all day long. In conclusion, he could, I don't think of Abshir as a creep at all. He was just trapped in a, a mental cage as I was. I'm just going to leave it there for today because the video is about to run out. But don't feel trapped by sexuality. Feel free. Feel love. Feel joy. Feel nature. Make love. And connect.